Hello, this is a Seth Thomas 86T clock that I've been working on. It is a time only movement. There are six wheels between the plates. There are two main wheels down at the bottom there that have mainsprings on them. And then there are four wheels arranged one on top of the other up through the center. The wheels with the mainsprings on them, they wind counterclockwise. So as they unwind, they turn clockwise. So this wheel at the bottom in operation turns counterclockwise. The wheel above it turns clockwise, and that's a good thing because it's a that's the center wheel and the hands are on that wheel. Then the next wheel up turns counterclockwise. And then the escape wheel up the top turns clockwise. And again, that's a good thing because the escape wheel has an extra long pinion on it. And there's a second hand that, there's the second hand that mounts onto the escape wheel. I <coughs> was having some trouble getting this clock to run. So I built this test stand to run it on. And the reason I built its own test stand as opposed to using something like this is something like this is too fragile. You need a no-nonsense test stand to put a heavy clock like this on it. This one has, there's a cast iron stand that screws into the case. The pendulum the suspension spring mounts up here and then the pendulum hangs on that. And it's a fairly large, fairly heavy pendulum. And the movement itself is fairly large and fairly heavy. It has a deadbeat escapement. And I had some trouble getting that aligned in such a way that it would run. The, the verge is held on. You can see this up at the top here, this... Um, this bridge that holds on the verge and you adjust it by loosening that screw and, and moving that bridge up and down and there's a, another one on the back plate and that is a touchy adjustment. I'm going to say that the, the sweet spot where it will run in terms of how far the pallets go into the escape wheel, you've got no more than I'd say a thousandth of an inch, two thousandths of an inch at, at the most to play with. It's got to be pretty, pretty accurate. The, I finally got it adjusted where it will run, and, and this has been running for probably a good 20 hours at this point. Um, the, the swing on the pendulum, you can see here where I've got it, marked by screwdrivers. From, from the leftmost part of that swing to the rightmost part of the swing, I've got maybe an inch and a quarter. And frankly, I would be happier if it were more like an inch and a half or two inches, but it is what it is. And I'm thinking if I nudged the pallets, say maybe one half of a thousandth of an inch further down, I might be able to get a little bit more swing out of that pendulum, but I am not inclined to mess with it at this point because I have it running. What I'm going to do at the end of the video here is close in on the escapement and fill the frame as much as I can with the escapement. And then I'm going to use some video editing software, ClipChamp, and use the uh, snipping tool in ClipChamp to see if I can slow down the action of the escapement to about one-tenth of its actual speed so you can see what's going on with the escapement. Let's see if I can get this to focus. <coughs> 